If, they, if we ever had a, a family movie, it's probably that one about how 9-11 was an inside job. And I looked over at him, and he looked over at me with his whiskey, and he goes, when boys were bloody men. Give him a call. And he's like, yeah, I'm in Ohio. And he said it so casually. He said it like, yeah, I'm going to be a little late. I'm just going to need to go to Canada real quick. Fuck you, Dad! Oh, everybody, you know what it is. Welcome to another episode of Fuck You, Dad. Another very special episode. If we keep having special episodes, Kenyon, I think we're going to become a special podcast. It might be a thing. I think we might, might have be a Patreon. I, might I, have to quit the day job. Yeah. Parents might be proud of you. The whole I fucking nine yards. It, it really might happen if we keep doing these special episodes, but we've got a very funny comedian. I He just released an album last year, AFK, and it's fucking hilarious. Everyone, wherever you are, give it up for Mike Kaplan. Thank you so much for having me. I'm. I, it's a pleasure and an honor. And I. I hope. I don't mean to be like your dad and and come in all like strict and be like, now you've got to do your homework just a little bit more because I'll, I do appreciate your promoting my album that came out last year. I understand that you've got F's on the brain. Yes. And as such, you uh, you put an F in the title where there is no F. The title is A K A. You a had the A. In the K, hundred uh, percent. Did I say AFK? Like I a wave from the You said I thought you said like AK forty seven. You were so no <laughs> shit out there. <laughs> You're just. I, was, I, I when you said that, I'm like that's not the name of an album. Like I didn't want to say it out loud. I'm like, what the fuck is Mike Kaplan? Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was a good day. I didn't have to use my AFK, <laughs> yeah, my yeah. F N A K. But it, yeah, 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 so I really, I really appreciate it. I'm very, I'm, I'm F N proud of my album F N A K A. You know. <laughs> That's awesome. I really did appreciate it, and I know you talk about. Uh, you went on a. Um, uh, 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 help me out here, Kenyon. Ayahuasca I, retreat. Thank you. Yeah. An ayahuasca retreat. And I am dying to hear about. Because my friends want me to do that too, and I am a terrified little boy. So I, oh, I understand. Well, I mean, uh, too bad this show isn't uh, all about moms because uh, people <laughs> often refer to ayahuasca as like mother ayahuasca or the grandmother. Oh, uh, that's but yeah, nice. so sorry. All I can tell you is about the plant called uh, San Pedro or San Pedro, uh, which I believe is the father to ayahuasca's mother. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, and it's actually a little more chill, the experience that I had with it. But, really? Uh, here's so, the thing is, I, I, I mean... If you want to uh, have this experience, they, they say that, you know, ayahuasca uh, releases DMT into your brain, which is in your brain, and maybe it is what's responsible for uh, the visions that people have sort of at the end of their life as you die, perhaps while you dream, maybe while you're born, uh, you know, maybe all throughout, depending who you are. But, uh, and I can understand why that might uh, terrify a person, but you know, like, life is terrifying by itself. So you're right. you know, yes, like, it is. Why not just uh, exchange one terrifying, this, I mean, like the terrifying reality for the tele terrifying dreamscape that uh, are your insides. Um, but It's like the best like manic drug dealer I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> it's a scared kid at a middle school. He's like, just, just exchange one terrifying reality for another, <laughs> Jimmy. Yeah. Hey, He's hey, like, hey, I don't kid. know. I feel nervous. He's just shoving mushrooms <laughs> in his mouth. I'm oh, just yeah, asking you, you to yeah. swap realities, son. And that's the thing about, I, I feel like I grew up, like not specifically with the D.A.R.E. program, but Definitely with, you know, like uh, fear inducing drug, like anti drug education. Be okay. It, like with the idea that I feel like there were after school specials kind of programs that are that are like, look out, people are going to try to give you oh, drugs. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to say no. And I feel like the way that people are with drugs, and drugs is such a broad term, drugs mean so many things, but for the most part, people want money for their they're, drugs. They're very, very insistent on it. I've tried. Yeah. I've tried to just have people hand it to me, and it never, never happens. You, you should go into like a dark alley or into the woods or into you know a pharmaceutical company and be yeah. like I understand people are just uh, giving away drugs yeah. and maybe <laughs> pharmaceutical companies are like you can have a couple of these but then you're gonna have to pay up you yeah. know uh, but yeah I think uh, those after school specials always made it the drug dealer look incredibly like it would sometimes it wouldn't even be vague it would just be a snake and it would be like you own drugs <laughs> a snake with a trench coat and you're like how is yeah. it even holding the yeah. is it like three snakes in a, or like eight snakes <laughs> in a trench coat behaving like three children who are yeah. trying to sell drugs to other snake children but and they, you know what they should have done is not had them on after school they should have had them on they should have been during school specials do you know what I mean because 
for a during school special, that'll get the kids who are cutting school and watching TV. But the uh, kids who are after school be like, well, I should be able to relax. But um, <laughs> yeah, have I watch you, Saved by the Bell like a normal person. <laughs> yeah. Have you personally, have you done any uh, mind altering sort oh, of, yeah. of the quote drugs, like psychedelic type things and just not yet this particular one? Or are you terrified of all things? No, no, no. I, well, I am terrified of all things. Let's yeah. get that the st- out of the way. That's a first. That's yeah. always my first emotion whenever something new enters my life is pure it's, terror. It's fear, fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As, as you do. Uh, but no, I've done mushrooms and acid. Uh, You've done the Holy Trinity: mushrooms, acid, <laughs> Molly. I like I've done say. the Holy Trinity. I've done the Holy Trinity. Yes. Rolled mush- this weekend. I thought it was great time. <laughs> <laughs> Quite honestly, <laughs> forgot all about it. Um, yeah, no, oh, I also. Remember. Mushrooms, Acid, Molly, that's another M-A-M, another sort of mom kind ah, of thing on the this dad mother. podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I guess that's that's what you got to do is get all, get the dad trinity in there, which is DMT and DMT, oh, yeah. D-A-D. So. Yeah. Another another one of my friends is, swears by DMT, and he was like, I spoke to these a beings to who, who had the whole world under their control, and they were saying, all we need to do is love each other, and yeah. I was like, that sounds incredible just coming from your mouth. I mean, do I really have to, you know, change, like, lose my ego and shit? Yeah. Like, it was nice hearing you say that. And he's a guy who normally does not, he, like, he ran over my head with a snowboard when we were kids. Like, he's not, he's not a one love <laughs> kind of kid. Yeah. But DMT, I think it could help those kind of, those kind of folks, you know? Uh, absolutely. I mean, number one, I'll say you don't have to do it. That's definitely for sure. You, That's where you I'm don't. At. Yeah, you, you you needn't. But uh, also, I feel like maybe the the experience that he had with DMT was maybe he got visited by. It's not necessarily like people definitely have experiences where it seems like they're speaking to other beings. Where sometimes I my understanding is that it could be you know they say like in dreams like you might be visited by people who aren't you in your dream. You might have experiences with people who aren't you, but you're like maybe each person because you're invoking them. You are. It's like some aspect of yourself. Like if your mother is in your dream, mm. oh. it's like oh maybe it's the motherly part of yourself. If it's a particular friend in your dream, maybe what does that friend represent to you? Maybe it's that part of yourself. Hmm. And so you know maybe he's visiting like the alien parts of himself. Like the guide, <laughs> the ayahuasca oh, guide deep. that I've gone to always says things like like this. This is not going to make you more powerful. It's not going to like reveal to you necessarily like all the secrets of the universe. It's not going to make you anything compared to anybody else. It's going to help tell you where you are help you discover where Mm. you are right now and so maybe for your friend maybe this guy who ran over your head with a snow uh a snowboard a snowmobile snowboard snowmobile he wouldn't be here yeah Yeah. Yeah. absolutely absolutely just a (laughs) another minnesota funeral a, (laughs) a slow board i like to say uh and he, maybe he had his first DMT experience and was visited by a part of himself who exhibited maybe regret for that. He's like, hey, that's why <laughs> oh, I wish. he's more yeah. of yeah. a one love person now. Yeah. He's like, we really should be loving each other and not running each other over <laughs> with uh, snowmobiles or snowboards or any. Uh, let's not run each other over at all. With, yeah. any, with any recreational vehicles. That would yeah. be a good rule. It's a good, uh, good rule of thumb. So, Mike, when did you start getting into, like, tripping and all that kind of stuff? Were you, like, as a teenager, were you doing that? or? Did it take no, a uh, great question. In fact, uh, so my mom and my dad, I'm an only child, my mom and dad, who uh, were together until uh, I was about 13 or so, 13, oh, 14. Wow. Uh, they were, and when, even when they split up, when they divorced, uh, they were like, well, you know, th- we, we love you both and we're both here for you and this has nothing to do with you. You know, this isn't your fault. And I was like, I mean, of course, I, how could it be my fault? But I was like, why are you even saying <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah, this like, makes you, me feel was, like it's kind of my fault a little bit. Was it my you say, yeah. Yeah. Even, yeah. I didn't even. Exactly. Answer my brain, you're like, dude, it's not your fault. Just because yeah, of like, the strain of your existence tore us apart, even though we I'm were manly in love for a person. long time. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even. Like, I'm not in your bedroom. Like, I, I didn't. I didn't fail to give you an orgasm for the last ten years. This is my fucking fault. <laughs> You know? exactly. you, I, I, how did were you there for this talk? That I don't exactly know. I'm, it. And this is every so, divorced person is like, it's not your fault. You're like, I never entered that into my. You're like, it's I not mean, like my parents split up. Like, I'm like, I know it, it's not my fault. It's your fault it, for thinking this could ever must work. Be, it must be. I mean, there are circumstances in which the parents don't say that, where yeah. you know maybe they're like, Ugh, you know, like maybe the child did introduce some you know instability in the like. Obviously, it's not like the child didn't choose it, didn't actively, didn't do, didn't do right. anything. But that, and there are children who don't understand what's going on, and maybe everyone could benefit. It's way better 
from like here's here's an analogy like if i sometimes i'll meet a person uh who i haven't or like run into a person who i haven't seen in a long time and i always like it when if somebody if i don't remember them or even if i do if they're like hey uh like what actually what you did nick when you're like hey uh you might not remember this but we did like we did a show together years ago and it would be actually weird if you did remember like that's a very like hospitable inviting way to be as opposed to like one time i did a show and afterwards a guy came up to me and he was like hey remember me and i was like i'm so sorry yeah. i do meet a, I, I run into a lot of people a lot of places will you give me a hint and he's like come on oh. and i was like oh well, that's terrible you come on and yeah, yeah. i never found out who he was <laughs> so i like i like it and much better Jesus. and and that's why i exactly we all are and uh <laughs> children of the ultimate dad god and uh dad god like dad bod as you will the dad bod the dad son anyway uh so the holy ghost dad uh that which is a movie that we don't watch anymore but i i really like it when... wait 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 i'm sorry i'm sorry mike to cut you off yes. is that a real movie holy ghost dad no. I mean, Ghost Dad is Ghost a movie. Dad. Ghost, Ghost Dad. Yeah. Ghost Dad is a Bill Cosby movie. Oh, oh. it gets it got worse from the title. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just mysteriously like, comes over your body. What a terrifying That's, ghost to have. Yeah, God. I, I mean, at the time, we had no idea how terrifying it would come to be. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> so the unholy Ghost Dad now, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. Devil Dad. So I. I like it when here. Sometimes it'll go like this: if I if I run into you and I re, I remember you and I'm like, hey, but I'm not sure you're gonna remember me. I'm like, hey, uh, I I'm Mike. Just you know, and I love it when it, it's way better for them to be like, of course I know who you are. Of, right. of course, rather than rather than risk being like, uh, will you? Like you know, it's kind of awkward and embarrassing. I'm so sorry. Like way better to offer more information uh, than than less information. And now I forget what this is an analogy to, but it was something. Yeah, it's about the divorce we the, about. and divorce when oh. they're like, it's yes, not your fault. Exactly, it's like exactly. nice to throw that out there yeah. so they don't even think. But yeah, I don't know. exactly. Thank you so much. Better to better. Is it Kenyan? Did I make yeah, that up? Funny. No, no. Uh, <laughs> it does sound. That's like great. That's it? great when someone remembers. What it, like that can't be it. That's not a person's yeah, I was name. Like, you win a lot of marathons. I don't yeah, know what yeah, this yeah, is. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, so there we go. Uh, this is sort of like we're going pretty fast here. We got it. We got it. Let's slow and steady. Yeah. So I would much rather. It's much better to tell a child uh, that it's not their fault when it's not their fault and have them be like, of course, you know, that sort of maybe builds up self-esteem as well. But this is all to say that my parents were very like, it was very like, don't do drugs, don't drink, don't okay. smoke uh, cigarettes. And I still to, to this day, like maybe I've taken in some tobacco like while, uh, you know, smoking some other thing that had tobacco yes. in it. But yeah. I've never I've never smoked a nicotine cigarette uh, to this day because I'm like, yeah, they were right about that. And drinking, I actually don't really do anymore for the last several years, not specifically because I'm in recovery, not that I'm like sober technically. Uh, it would be fine. I can have a drink. I just drinking doesn't do it for me the way yeah. like I don't I don't feel that I need it. But like and so but I did in college. I tried drinking and I was like, oh, drinking is OK if you do it uh, an amount that's OK and you can and it's different for everybody. It's hard to and figure then, it out. But drugs, so it's you know, a the long idea lesson like, for some people. Yeah, yeah. Sure. As we, oh, as oh, yeah. <laughs> drink, drinking as we drink the PBR the at 4 p.m. But, <laughs> <laughs> the, but yeah. the uh, over here it's 5 p.m. So it's you know they say it's five o'clock somewhere. It's go, literally yeah. five, the five o'clock hour <laughs> here. I'm where I am. <laughs> Uh, but the idea of drugs, so smoking, drinking, drugs, that was the one that like lingered with me the most because of, I guess, you know, m in my family and in our society, the the fear that yeah. uh, is associated with it that like when I was like 23, 24, uh, I'm, I was dating a woman mm -hmm. and she was very uh, high on pot. She was high on <laughs> the concept of getting high uh, because she was a musician and mm -hmm. a creative person and she was like it. I she found value in it and I even then I was like mm, I don't really want it kind of weirdly because one of my main reasons for at the time not wanting to do it I was like it doesn't like I've been fine without it I don't think that I need it and also I'm like if I have kids like what if I want to tell them with a clear conscience that they shouldn't smoke pot so I'm not going to smoke pot for some imagined children in the future so that oh I can God. honestly tell them and like I through conversations with this woman that I was dating and with uh, a couple other like good friends who like understood where I was coming from like I, I kind of just didn't want to but I 
also realized that I didn't. I, and that's a good enough reason to not. If you yeah. don't want to do something, no, for sure. you don't yeah, have yeah, to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you kind of should. But you're kind of a narc, but sure. <laughs> I mean, you're, just, you're a lame hang, but yeah, yeah, you're good. yeah, you could not want to do that. I absolutely <laughs> was. And yeah, yeah. I mean, it wasn't that I wanted to be like cool to my girlfriend, right, but should've. I did want to like take her experience seriously and like actually like measure, measuredly, like objectively, logically assess like where was my resistance coming? And I was like, truly, I I realized that my reason. It was more just sort of border, like baseline fear, mm-hmm. than like having a specific reason to not want to do it. Mm-hmm. And so I did. I smoked pot with her for the first time, and don't know if it really affected me. And I did it a couple more times, and eventually I would do it. Mainly, I never. I really hadn't bought it. I've never bought weed for smoking. Uh, but I would at a party if somebody's like, "You want some?" I would do it. And now I know that for me, like eating a weed edible at home while like relaxing and listening to music and just lying there and feeling my body in ways that I don't actively strive to do when I'm not uh, in that edible I- induced state yeah. like now I like I like that but like I was all the other times I was uh, smoking pot I was like in a group of people that was like a weird you know like a fun even it's friends always, yeah 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 because it, it makes you so hypersensitive yeah it's, to... it's really not a good social drug I don't know why it's, it's always... not really it's, a good social drug yeah. at all yeah you're right and it's if it's if you're like you know results may vary because I know there's people for whom like for me it doesn't necessarily make me more creative but there's people like Rory Scovel a a friend and hilarious comedian who can t- ingest marijuana and then be in you know a, co- a conduit to everything I, and I it's saw that his latest uh, yeah. special the documentary about the relapse theater and there yes. was one of his sets I can't remember which one but he it was seen like just sparking a bowl a couple times and then just walking out there. And and I, oh yeah, I've yeah, done I, that I, at I like been open mics, in fear. being like, "Oh yeah, I'll be fine." And even at an open mic, I'm like, "Oh, I'm cla- I feel like I'm at you know the cellar all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. I'm like clammy oh, yeah. and like nervous." <laughs> and he There's, just rips an yeah. hour. You know, he's incredible. And there are like specific shows that I've done where it's like you smoke and then you go out and do your set, and that part of it fun. is that the the audience knows that. But even in those situations, when Still I've weird. done that, I get out there and I'm like, now. Am I just supposed to do jokes <laughs> like regular? What way yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. And this ends up being my set where I'm just like, is this you? I do this. <laughs> this is what I do. This is is this what you want? Is what am I? What am I to do? As and, an audience member, you kind of want them to be like all goofy and high because yeah. you're like that's the gimmick. And then, right. but as a comedian, you're like, I don't want to be goofy and high because then you know I'm high. Yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a conflict. You know, it's a battle. Oh yeah. And so then, uh, while I was uh, in in my mid twenties, somewhere around twenty five ish, uh, a couple years after that, I was like, okay, so pot, not not my favorite thing, but also not a, a super harmful thing for me, not a dangerous, you know, fear inducing thing, just like a a socially awkward thing, and. Then I did I did a music festival. I performed at a music festival Ooh, on Block oh Island. Uh, so I was doing music and comedy at the time. I was sort of just getting into comedy. I had started more aspiring to be a singer songwriter. Oh really? And so I, I didn't I did, know that. Oh yeah. That's so I very did a cool. forty. I did a yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I did a I did a forty five minute set of like you know I probably like. I don't know, uh, eight songs, and then in between I would tell a few jokes because I was just starting out doing that. And afterwards, I sold, I had CDs of my music at the time. Music and like some jokes, but mostly music. Uh, And I sold one to a guy, and he gave me a $10 bill, and it was wrapped around a psychedelic uh, psilocybin mushroom. And I was like, oh, like I've heard about these. And I was like, hey, can I give you this $10 back and or however many more dollars you need for more of these? And was it a had... snake in a trench coat, Mike? Or was it a person? Uh-huh. <laughs> it, it was a very nice snake. Uh, <laughs> snakes get such a bad rap. Snakes are just like, eat apples. An yeah. apple a day keeps the doctor away is good advice, except when it's from a snake and it's a particular <laughs> apple and maybe it's a pomegranate and who knows. <laughs> but uh, And that story is metaphorical in lots of other ways. But I... I remember that, so I had, I, we, I and the same woman that I was, uh, 
with at the time we she was there as well and we got these mushrooms and we did them and maybe a couple of the other people there did them and then we're just on this island that like you you walk around uh, it's like you can walk around the whole island it's only like a couple miles around and it was like there was you know there was people at a party but then also you could just walk outside and be yeah. kind of in nature and and i remember the it was the first time that was sort of you know the first psychedelic experience that i had that and sounds I was, perfect the, like literally oh, it was, a perfect it was place very to do good that. Yeah. Yeah. And so then I felt like whereas I could do it with people like I'm happy, like my favorite place to do mushrooms is like with a, a person I love, you know, in a natural environment, in mm. a relaxing, you know, a nice time and space, a good set and setting, as they say. And also, if somebody's at a party and they're like, do you want some mushrooms? Uh, and you have to do them now because we're getting on a plane tomorrow. They're like, sure. Why not? And that I can like now that I know how I am with mushrooms, uh, I can generally speaking, and you know, if they know like this is the dosage, like yeah. great, then I can do this and have a reasonable experience. And so I did probably mushrooms a few times a year, you know, from when I was 25 until the present. Like I probably don't do them that often anymore, but every once in a while. But then, so I'm, I'm 42 now. And so I think I did ayahuasca for the first time when I was, you know, maybe like seven years ago or something okay. seven ish oh, yeah. years ago uh and so my mid 30s and uh i had i had smoked dmt once before that wow. and i had oh, done so them. before it was cool then right before we had really <laughs> get, hit before, the was, before the vice articles know? came out yeah yeah for sure my do you guys know a uh, shane moss the i comedian? do know, shane, I moss. Do know yeah. shane moss yes yeah shane's a very good friend of mine uh we started out together around the same time in boston and he got uh he'd been you know doing psychedelics much longer than i and he got in, you know, he has a, a documentary called, I think, Psychonautics uh, or Psychonauts uh, yes. that I think yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and is on Amazon about about his experiences with various. Like, he's done a show called A Good Trip all about uh, the, variously. He has like a DMT TED talk, essentially. That's and it toured, several right? He hours like, toured around the whole country. I remember oh, seeing yeah. the flyers were incredible, obviously. Oh, yeah. Ramin Nazer, wonderful artist, friend of us, uh, and just beautiful, like, you know, uh, conduit of the human experience and more. Uh, I love the way you describe people. That's such a, conduit, a conduit, of conduit of the human, human experience. experience. If, if, if someone called said that about me, I would I would gush. I would literally well, gush. You, we are all that, so you are that too. <laughs> but uh, but Stop right it, now, with respect to this, him first. And... Yeah. Um, and I remember, yeah, so Ramin made like a coloring book to go along with Shane's psychedelic tour that I hope gets to be like recorded and released someday for everybody to get to see because it is, uh, oh, it's, you know, Shane is a master uh, of comedy and like this, you know, science and self exploration. And so, yeah, he. He had been smoking DMT for a while, uh, pretty frequently, and had me do it one time. Uh, and uh, he offered it, and I accepted. And it was real weird, and I didn't know exactly what was going on. <laughs> and it reminded me of a salvia experience that I had had, which was oh. also real weird. And at the time, I think not one of my favorites, one of my less favorite, uh, you know, like mind uh, changing and like. I, I've, I've never about done salvia, salvia. I've I've only heard like Negative kind of weird things. things. Yeah. Have you done it, Kenyon? You uh, you strike me as a kid who would have tried it. <laughs> that it's like my first drug. It's yeah. like my drug of choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I drank when I got smoked when I got off work. Um, no, I've never I never tried it. But everyone I know that I've talked to is like it's like a weird story. It's not like man, it was a lot of fun. It was like the wall turned into Muppets and they attacked me. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah it's always it. been like or like, but my buddy was like I I was a lightning bolt, but it wasn't like a, a peaceful one. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> I don't okay. Yeah. And like, like your regular <laughs> thunderstorm yeah, yeah, yeah. clouds, you know, the sky opens and, you know, just, oh, good, a peaceful lightning bolt coming down. Your yeah. classic lightning piece. Uh, it's not like on the Flash's chest. Yeah. Uh, that was, that's one that represents justice. But, uh, yeah, so... Uh, but then when I did ayahuasca for the sh first time, which also, like, DMT is the active ingredient in ayahuasca, I, I felt like, you know, where DMT might feel like e an eternity or an infinity, uh, wow. but takes place in, like, 10 to 20 minutes, right. uh, 
I, an ayahuasca ceremony takes about, I think of it as like, it's maybe, you know, three to five hours and the same infinity is at least, you know, stretched out gradually oh. over that three to five hours. That's a lot and of it infinity. Comes on, <laughs> yeah, it comes on more gradually. And I mean, sometimes it comes on suddenly and it, it is very powerful. Uh, but then what the first time, the first two times I did it, they were these beautiful ethereal experiences that sometimes they talk about like in Peruvian, uh, culture uh, or lore wow. they have I, my understanding is that they have like there's the the heavenly realm the earthly realm and then like the nether realm the realm of the dead and that sometimes why you might you know like the, my first ones were all heavenly realm it was just like soaring like the condor which represents <laughs> it and then the the cat or like i think the uh the the is it the panther or the what some jungle cat that represents uh, the the earthly realm, and then the nether realm is represented by you might hear sometimes people talk about uh, being visited by snakes trying to sell them oh, apples. Oh, there and, you go. Uh, and so you might get snake imagery, you might get cat imagery, you might get bird imagery. And so my first several were just beautiful, kind of like, I mean, these experiences, I did pay money to have the experience yeah. for them, but they were kind of like the drug dealer giving me uh, the the good stuff for free. And they're like, <laughs> hey, if you like, you like this, come on back. And then uh, next time it'll cost you a little bit in, uh, in comfort, mm. but still like the, the meaningfulness of the experiences that I would have that would become, you know, sometimes uh, emotionally, psychologically, sometimes physically, uh, and otherwise painful uh, or, you know, difficult, challenging yeah. in mm -hmm. ways. And then sometimes the experience would be like a mix of all those things. Uh, but yeah, I feel like it, whatever, whatever you're afraid of, you're probably, you know, Either you might be right, and also uh, you probably. I mean, look, I can't. I can't speak for anyone. Like, like you get, you do it. Do it if you're called to do it, and like do some research and find out. You know the best ways and places and do practices. It because everything yeah. that you've explained about it has sounded incredible. I mean, you said heavenly, and then you said cat imagery. I'm a huge. I, I would love. I would love to. I had a buddy who also did ayahuasca, and he he raved about. Like you said, he was like, I turned into a panther, and I was like running through the jungle and I was like well that that sounds very fun and maybe I figure out why I need to go up on stage every night and <laughs> talk about my penis like maybe we'll figure out why I'll solve it Nick is Nick you know yeah, yeah. it's very in so uh, you have jokes about uh, all this kind of stuff um, in numerous albums and your parents sound like people who would really like support you in whatever you decided to do so was there like a conflict of them hearing material about you doing drugs uh Great question. Uh, I remember it comes from personal to my... experience. That's why. That's why <laughs> sure, I'm sure. Um, well, I honestly don't like m both of my parents have seen like the the show that became AKA, which is uh, I was doing for a couple years and brought to Edinburgh at, when it was called All Killing Aside, and uh, you know the the general themes are love. Uh, compassion and not murdering and <laughs> and so I talk about ayahuasca on that and I've talked about mushrooms on other shows that I've done and so my parents have both seen they've seen that show and they've listened to that album and I also haven't had extensive conversations with them about the content <laughs> of that material like okay. I know that I, I don't know, but I know that my, my, my mom at one point asked me after a show, what are mushrooms? Like she just <laughs> oh didn't my have. God. Oh, you're so uh, lucky. So she's gone. Yeah, she's uh, too far gone to. I mean, and so, and I have had late more, more recently experiences with my mom talking about like over the past year during, during the beginning of the pandemic and uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, and also my grandmother died at, right at the beginning of the pandemic. It was my mom's mom. So I started talking to my mom a lot more for both of these reasons. Right. And so we ended up talking about more substantial uh, things like, you know, uh, and so this came up at one point and my, you know, my mom does like she is very supportive of me and yeah. loves me. And, you know, obviously is like I am a free human autonomous adult individual as much as anyone is, uh, as much as some people are, as much as I am, at least, uh, or maybe not even that. And so I'm, you know, she knows that. And there are things that like uh, 
if we were each other, we would live our lives potentially slightly differently, for we do live our lives slightly differently as ourselves. And so, yeah, my mom has expressed to me that, like, uh, that mind-altering, you know, psychedelic substances are not, uh, if she were in charge of my experience yeah. now, yeah. she would probably still be like, don't do that. But uh, she, and so it's sort of at a, it's at know, an like impact. a don't ask, Because you're, you're a grown-ass man. Yeah, it's like, what thing. are you going to yeah. do? Yeah. That, that's what it boils yeah. down to. Right. So my mom also man. doesn't really like... Like, here, this is going to be a fun joke uh, <laughs> for a moment, but uh, so my mom doesn't really, she's not a, she's she's into clean comedy. She doesn't love swearing. So to her, I'm a grown butt man. Uh, <laughs> that is, I'm that a, is grown, a cute joke. That's grown one of the cutest, man. cutest yeah. jokes on the, it's been a cute episode. Actually. Yeah, pretty. Right? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Just a nice, sure. nice lecture about who psychedelics and who I, we are. Uh, yeah. So Mike, do you, um, do you have anything else you want to plug besides your, your album before we head out? Oh, sure. I mean, do you want me to tell you one quick dad story? Let's do a quick dad yes. story. Let's, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please so, do. Like, like I said, my dad and I have not extensively talked about uh, psychedelics or what have you. Uh, so I feel like we're in a similar place. Uh, or maybe he just does them all the time and doesn't tell mm -hmm. me about it. But uh, here's this is a, a quick thing that I, I really like this story that we were he I was out to lunch with him at a diner. And uh, there were two menus. One was the brunch menu, one was the lunch menu. And they both had, because brunch, uh, or maybe it was brunch and breakfast, whatever it was, they both had omelets. And there was a section of omelets, and it was the same exact omelets listed on each menu. But one of the menus called the section of omelets uh, fluffy omelets, and the other one called it tasty and fluffy omelets. <laughs> and my dad looks at it and he's like, well, I think if I'm going to get one of those, I'm going to get the tasty and fluffy, not just the fluffy. Uh, and I was like, dad, that's pretty funny. And he's like, well, you know, I got it from you. And I like the idea that my dad inherited comedy from, <laughs> from me <laughs> in a way that I'm like, and I, it's sort of like in the one of the first Batman, I think the first Batman movie with Michael Keaton, where the Joker and Batman are, there's like a thing where they're like, I created you, like I wouldn't exist without you but I, you wouldn't yeah, exist without me. Exactly. Like, which one of us created the other? And I'm like, I wouldn't exist without my dad for sure, but perhaps my dad wouldn't have made that joke without me. And my mom also has told me that when, since she watched tons of my Zoom shows and like online shows uh, over the past year because we couldn't see each other as much in person, uh, she she now she's like you're my activity and now she's like looking for jokes all the time like, she's a funny person yeah and has always been a funny person but has not actively tried to like not been like hey I said something on purpose that was fun she's like you make me want to be a funnier person so I guess wow. uh, I'm just yeah, I'm right. wanna plug my mom's social media um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and she's on TikTok uh, right now dancing her butt <laughs> off <laughs> uh, her yeah absolutely I was like is butt the word that I used it is 100 <laughs> yeah, percent yeah. dancing her keys <laughs> um, and uh, her derriere. So yeah, uh, to answer your question of what I would love to plug, uh, in addition to like the album, AKA is my, uh, honestly, it's my most recent and the work that I'm proudest and happiest with and sort of, I think represents like what I'm doing with comedy it's the fantastic. most right now. I really appreciate it. And you can also, of course, follow me on social media at Mike Kaplan, M-Y-Q-K-A-P. L A N. If you put Mike Kaplan in anywhere, you'll find all my albums and specials and podcasts. My po two podcasts are called Broccoli and Ice Cream and uh, The Faucet. And I also have a, a newsletter that I send out every week for free. And you can sign up uh, and subscribe for more. And there's always several jokes and other fun units in it. And it's at uh, MikeKaplan.substack.com. So, oh, that's but, very uh, cool, yeah. Mike. All that, whatever you like. Well, Phenomenal. thank you so much again for doing this. This was so fun and informative. I think I learned a lot. Oh, thank now. you for inviting me and uh, and asking all these questions. <laughs> thank you for asking so many questions that I could talk uh, <laughs> and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk about. Absolutely, so, that's my job. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks for joining, man. Hey, thank you for watching. Wasn't that funny? Wasn't that a great clip or full episode? Do you want to watch more? Because I got more. Oh, we got more. We got full episodes and we got clips right here and right here. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook for updates on uh, live dates uh, for both me and Kenyon. You know, if you have a dad story that you want to sh that that you want to share with us, feel free to DM any of those or email us at fckyoudad podcast at gmail.com. Thank you and keep watching. Please share it. Tell everybody.
Tell literally everybody you know about this podcast.